GlaxoSmithKline has been in the news over its diabetes drug Avandia and how long the company has known that it can cause heart attacks. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is now deciding whether to pull it off the market. That got us wondering, how is it that questionable drugs safety studies get published in the first place? We asked the CBC's Dan Halton to find out. It's not always easy for Ramesh Karnik to remember which pills to take when. But when he found out two years ago one of those pills could harm him, he stopped cold, even though the medication worked well. I read in the um, medical papers that Avandia was harming the liver it was, and, and the heart. Risks, it now turns out, the drug's manufacturer knew about as far back as 1999. According to company documents obtained by the New York Times, GlaxoSmithKline knew Avandia increased the risk of stroke, heart attack, even death compared to other leading medication. But instead of publishing the results, GSK was sending emails like this one. Per senior management request, these data should not see the light of day to anyone outside GSK, wrote former executive Dr. Martin Fried in March 2001. Avandia is just the latest in a long line of drugs whose health risks we now know could outweigh the benefits. So how then do those drugs still get to market? The drug companies um, are really trying to shape medical knowledge uh, from beginning to end. So they, uh, they do the clinical trials or they outsource the clinical trials, but then they, they write the publications. Even the most prestigious medical journals have been fooled. One recent study published in the British Medical Journal stated, it seems premature to conclude that environmental tobacco smoke causes death from coronary heart disease and lung cancer. The authors turned out to be consultants paid by a major tobacco company. The medical publishing industry is plagued by conflicts of interest. It starts with researchers. They often depend on industry sources for funding, and in an increasingly competitive academic environment, researchers seeking publicity to attract more funding may also interpret their data selectively. There is good evidence now that many of the initial findings that research studies find are exaggerated and subsequent studies either don't confirm that or confirm it to be much more modest. I asked the editor of The Lancet why there aren't more safeguards. Sometimes we get caught up in a publicity spiral promoting a piece of work that perhaps shouldn't be promoted. I think we need to be more modest, more humble, more careful about the way information is released into the public community. Ramesh Karnik says he's still angry. They are playing with our lives. They're not playing with their own. All their interests at pharmacy is their own profit. Most doctors now advise against taking a Vandia, but GlaxoSmithKline insists the benefits outweigh the risks, and the medication is still popular. Last year, there were 2 million prescriptions. Dan Halton, CBC News, Montreal.